Have you ever watched a show and watched the villain team up with the hero and wondered, why is the hero not going to other heroes? Okay, yeah, in that case, I totally see why. And welcome back to the heart of the stories we tell. I'm Rob the Host, and this is another look deep into what makes a story a story. A theory on storytelling by a storyteller who believes that every story has merit. And tonight's episode is... Why is it getting harder to tell the heroes from the villains? Before I go too far, I want to explain what do I mean. I mean, obviously, the hero is the hero of the story, the villain is the villain of the story. But more and more, we see these gray areas. Is this person really a bad person? Or did something bad happen to them? Is this person a useful ally to keep? Or someone that I need to stop? Is this ally someone who's going to turn on me? It's a level of complex storytelling that I enjoy, and that there's no way that I would want to see us go back to. But, it's also a post-Game of Thrones world. One where Martin himself has reshaped what we think of when we think of power, and when we think of heroes, and when we think of villains. Now before I get too far into this, I don't want to make it seem like Martin's the first person to come up with this idea, nor is he the only person that holds it. The concept of the hero and the villain being two sides of the same coin is literally as old as the radio, as old as time itself, as old as stories. The idea that heroes aren't anything special in and of themselves, the fact that there are good and bad in everyone, the idea that everyone sees themselves as the hero of their story. And I love all of those concepts. I really do. One of the most annoying things that I have ever found, and I agree with Martin with this, is when you open a book and BAM! You know who the hero is, you know how they're gonna win, and you know immediately why they're going to win. Because they're the protagonists, and protagonists have this innate protection. And all the protagonists are goody-two-shoes, and all the villains are mustache-twirling villains. However, we're coming off a huge point where people are heroes fighting heroes, and villains fighting villains. And the hero has to team up with the villain to save the day because they don't have another way to go. Or maybe they just need the villain's power, or they need the villain's expertise in something. At the end of the day, these are cool, because, you know what, sometimes the villains just are really cool characters. And when you don't have anything left to do with them, giving them a nice face-heel turn gives them the ability to go on and become the heroes. You're getting deja vu and starting to say, hey, wait, haven't we covered this already? Yes, in my Why Did Superman Join the X-Men thing, we talked about all of this. We talked about heroes going gray and villains getting grayed up and the fact that the good guys aren't always visible and sometimes it takes a bad guy. We could do a whole thing about it. Game of Thrones took it one step further. One of Martin's theories is that you don't wake up the hero every day and then go to bed every day, the hero. Someday, you become the hero. And when you do, you rise above it all, you push past it, and you become it. But on every other day, like last Tuesday and a week from Thursday, you're just some asshole. You're just going about your day and doing your normal thing. But nowadays, it's not just villains being villains and villains working with heroes. Sometimes it's heroes fighting heroes. And why is that? Well, there's a lot of reasons. Let's start with the fact that there are certain people that shouldn't get along, and there are certain people that are going to mistakenly not get along. But you know what the big thing is? The fantasy aspect. A hundred internet arguments that have exploded out over the years. Who could beat who? Whose feats can line up to whose feats? Can Storm control Molgenar? Can Thor break Storm's control? Can Hulk punch Superman and beat him? Can Superman do anything against Batman, who obviously always has a plan? And of course, you always go with your most powerful. And there's a little bit of fan service in there. People want to see the heroes fight because they want to see who would win. But to all my fellow writers out there, I want to give this warning. I want you to think about this for a second. What happens when there's too dark a gray? When heroes just stop seeming like heroes? and villains seem like them. Well, in my case, I kind of get annoyed. And now here's why. Because we have villains for a reason, and I love a good shade of gray. I love a song of ice and fire. But not every story needs to be a song of ice and fire. Last year, this hit an all-time high, when both Marvel and DC put out pretty much nothing but versus movies. And you know what? 
I just, as even the ones I liked and the ones I didn't like, it didn't matter. I'm just kind of tired of it. It's easy enough to see what the difference is between Punisher, Batman, and the Suicide Squad. Who gets to call themselves a hero, who gets to call themselves a villain, and who's the anti-hero. Now, there's a blurry line, I will admit, but the line still exists. And somewhere along the way, something that Martin said once kind of rubs me the wrong way about erasing that line. As much as I don't want every story to be just black and white, I don't need every story to be muddied by shades of gray. On one hand, he can totally see the idea of genre convention, and where it's really just a mask we hide behind when telling the same stories. But then he sits there and he doesn't understand that the genre conventions are sometimes there for a reason. The idea of the hero being the hero and the villain being the villain is a classic staple of a lot of these stories. And once you peel that back too much, sometimes you lose more than you think you do. And with that, I want to turn to the elephant in the room. Now, a lot of people think when I say the word hero, I mean superhero. And that's probably because a lot of the time I do. I watch a lot of it. But the hero's journey is really something that's taken by a lot of characters. Even ones that you wouldn't normally relate to as being a superhero. Now, of course, this is a fantasy and sci-fi staple. And again, it also goes to several murder mysteries and all sorts of different stories. The basic concept of it is pretty simple. However, one of these days I'm going to need to remember that I should definitely be using the word protagonist instead of the word hero. The only difference is in this case, I truly do believe that the hero of the story is the one that we need to talk about. Because every once in a while, everyone needs a hero. But this is one of those reasons why I like to build a community. Because I want to talk to you guys about this. What do you think? Do you think that things getting grayer and grayer is better for the genres that we like? Or do you think that the idea has started to overcome itself? That the idea has started to push it to where we don't have heroes anymore? It's hard to create a new hero when everyone's just a shade of gray. Let me know what you think down in the comment section. And as always, I'd love for you to give this a like and a share on social media, and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, because I'm trying to build this community up so that we can all talk about and explore what it means to be each type of character, each type of story, as we take a walk through the heart of the stories we tell. Have a good night, and thanks for watching.